Trouble tune up like guitars do. The, this system is not um, it's not a perfect instrument. It isn't. <laughs> well, no. See, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to hypnotize that man. <laughs> yeah, it's never uh, it's never perfect instrument. Never perfectly in tune. Never. Same with the piano. Oh uh yeah. -huh. Well, you can, yeah, you can yeah. make it in tune. Because yeah, but uh, yeah. when when a piano uh, tune it, tune it up, a good piano tuner is tuned up. Mm -hmm. You can't get, you yeah. can't get, you know, you can't get no more in tune. But this, you can tune it up perfect. At least this one, <laughs> and and a half hour later, something else is happening. Mm -hmm. I think I tried some blues. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. <laughs> kind of weird. Let's, let's try some Nicker's Dream. Nicker's Dream. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yours? Who's? Yeah. Dream? You have to Nicker's Dream? Yeah. I think Latin American. Hit a rhythm. Yeah, I think the first part is Latin. First 16 is Latin. Then you go into 4 4 swing, then go back to Latin.
That's not really the, uh, the original ending, but uh, well, it's very involved. <laughs> That's what I didn't do it. <laughs> we only have to do this. Uh, um, uh, What's the name of it? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it before, yeah, and of course, but. Uh, we didn't play it, we? we can try. Let's try it. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, Which key? We'll start off, uh, it's A flat minor, but to start off B flat. Gosh, it's kind of messed up. It starts off B flat, yeah. it's an A flat minor. F minor, rather, I'm sorry. F minor starts off B flat. Uh, whole step. Yeah, another whole step. All of those. Yeah, that's right. Half time, I think. Uh, uh, F minor, you know. Yeah. One more, yeah. Repeat it, yeah. Repeat it out. That's F, F major, that's seven, yeah, yeah.
Why don't you take into a, a, a temple you feel it at? Because everybody wouldn't feel the same temple. <laughs> you! <laughs> okay. Now, just the first temple coming to your mind, just jump right on top of the piano. You know, it, it's the type of tune you can play in a temple, really. So, in a way you feel. I tell you, let's do it uh, light first and then pick it up. And I have to feel a couple of courses. Yep. Yeah. Take it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
hands of a man who's been described as the world's leading jazz guitarist, Wes Montgomery. You might remember that some time ago we presented a program in which the British jazzman Ronnie Scott introduced one of the world's leading tenor sax players, Ben Webster. In fact, Ronnie Scott has done more than anybody else to bring modern jazz into the forefront in this country, and certainly nobody's better qualified to talk about it than he is, and so we've invited him again to the studio to introduce us to Wes Montgomery. It's only during the last three or four years that Wes Montgomery has achieved the recognition he deserves. And uh, whilst it's generally accepted that he is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, jazz guitarist in the world, uh, the most amazing thing about him is, I think, that he's completely self-taught and, and, and unschooled, a completely natural musician. Whereas this was quite common some 20 or 30 years ago when jazz was a much simpler music, uh, in these days of, of complex harmonies and rhythm, it really is very much uh, of a rarity. Uh, coupled with this is the fact that Wes has, through force of circumstances, developed his own very highly individual technique, which involves him uh, plucking the strings of the guitar with the thumb of his right hand, as opposed to the normal uh, tortoise shell or plastic pick that the vast majority of guitarists use. But more about that later. Meanwhile, here's Wes to play a composition of his own, which involves the normal uh, common 4-4 four -four rhythm superimposed against the rhythm of 6-8. And Wes has called it, logically enough, uh, 4 on 6.
always told me the story of how he came uh, to play with his thumb rather than with a pick. It appears that when he first heard the great Charlie Christian, when he was about, uh, when Wes was about 19, he proceeded to go out and buy himself a guitar and amplifier and start to practice. And he used to like to practice with the amplifier on. And this very much annoyed uh, a maiden aunt of Wes's who lived in the next flat and she did nothing but scream abuse at him through the partition wall. Uh, Wes soon discovered that uh, the noise was cut down considerably when um, the uh, thumb was substituted for the pick. Um, the maiden aunt was uh, reduced to just sort of subdu subdued gibberings and uh, everyone was happy except uh, on Wes's first engagement when he fondly believed that he could substitute the pick for his thumb whenever he wanted to, uh, he discovered that when he was using the pick he couldn't tell one string from another. So uh, he proceeded to play the rest of the evening with his thumb and since then has developed this technique to a, a, a really amazing degree. Um, you'll hear an example of this fantastic, very personal technique in this next tune, which is another of Wes's compositions. It's called Full House.
was an interpretation of uh, a very pretty tune called Here Comes That Rainy Day, the Bossa Nova rhythm. Um, during his appearances in this country, Wes Montgomery has been heard by almost every major British guitarist, and they've all been full of admiration for his work. And uh, one of the things that seems to uh, amaze them most is this incredible ability he has to play phrases, fast, complicated phrases, in octaves, uh, faster than most guitarists can play single string runs. Uh, you'll hear uh, this expressed uh, in this next tune that Wes is going to play, which will be his last contribution, and I think you'll agree that Wes Montgomery has very firmly laid his claim to be the boss of the jazz guitar. Here's Wes Montgomery in another of his own compositions called Twisted Blues. <laughs> Thank you. 